Buenas noches, Tucson. I'm Luke Rollin Goodhart, and you're watching Goodnight Goodhart, the live, shade grown, single origin, locally owned, fair trade talk show of your dreams. Thank you so much for tuning into our very first episode. Bless your little hearts. You must have a lot of faith and trust in me, and I look forward very much to squandering that with my inane babble, psychotic rants, and freaky guests. But while I still have a shred of credibility and dignity, I would like to introduce the foolhardy suckers who I've hornswoggled into being my virgin lab rats. And by that, of course, I mean the two esteemed members of the Tucson art scene right here by my side, starting with the inimitable Ginger Schulich Porcella, executive director and chief curator of the Museum of Contemporary Art Tucson, and all around badass gay wad, Jared Brayton Bullenbacher, Artistic Director of both Reveille Men's Chorus and Desert Voices, which comprise both of the LGBTQ choruses right here in the old Pueblo Dome. Welcome. Give them a clap, studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, studio audience. So how the hell are you guys? Good. It's so awesome to have you here. What did you guys do today? Um, I went to the Pinata factory and got this shirt. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. It's a beautiful Pinata shirt. Yeah. Love it. Love so that it. was the highlight of the day. Right on. What about you? What was your big day? Uh, I worked out and then I um, directed one person from a homeless squire that a we're starting. Homeless squire. Right on. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. I wish I would have gone to the Pinata factory though. <laughs> yeah. Where is this Pinata factory again? I think there's a Pinata factory on Stone and something. And they have a couture line. That I see. <laughs> Called couture. Oh, it's because you are pinata. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, um, so the reason I brought you both on here today, you both have something in common, which I think is really interesting. Mm. You're both from places other than Tucson, but you came here to kind of take the reins of local, uh, well-known, well-respected arts institutions, um, but very different arts institutions. We've got you know, uh, LGBTQ choruses. We've got the Museum of Contemporary Art, very different. Um, but they sort of play into the same fabric of the Tucson art scene. So yeah, first of all, I kind of want to just get some background. Like, who the hell are you? Who where am you, where I? are you why from? Am yes, I? Why, when are, am I? why are you? When are you? <laughs> <laughs> These kinds of things. Where are you from? What, what's home? Where is home? Um, I'm originally from the Midwest. Oh, um, yeah. There you go. The similarities keep building. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from, uh, from Illinois. I have not lived there for a long time. Um, <laughs> I moved. Uh, you know, in the 90s, uh, I was in New York for a very long time, in San Diego the last three years, and then recently just moved here. Right on, right yeah. on. And then we've got yeah, a Yeah, so I grew up in Indiana, here. and then I spent some time in Columbus, Ohio, which I loved, and then was in Seattle for like nine years, and now here. Right on, right on. World travelers, <laughs> US travelers, <laughs> national travelers. Or we're just Midwesterners that wanted to get out. That's, that's it. Well, from the Midwest to the Southwest, we're glad you're here. Um, and w what is your background? Like, what did you, to get where you are, what did you study? What is, what, what discipline are you trained in? Uh, my bachelor's degree is in art history, and my master's degree is in anthropology. Right on. That's cool. And uh, so I did two undergrads. I did one in vocal performance, and I was going to be an opera star, and then I decided I hated singing, so I decided to get a degree in sexuality studies. And I realized, wow. I know, right? <laughs> but I was like, what am I going to do with two gay degrees? So I got a master's <laughs> in social work. <laughs> Right on. So, so I social work. Degrees, yeah. So. <laughs> Look at us. Um, so from music to social work, that seems like a pretty big jump. Yeah. What was it that drew you from? You know, if you actually kind of like study like what goes into music and kind of this communal community feeling and kind of the feeling about how we use music and we use art in every way to really tell our emotional stories and our journeys, they actually go so hand in hand together. It was really crazy how they worked out. So. Interesting. I must, and you know, that comes in hand, you know, handling a big group of... Of gay men, of really. Of gay men in one yeah. room, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of emotions, so... A lot of opinions. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of have to say, I hear you, you're right heard. On. Yeah. Right on. Sweet. So most recently, you were in Seattle, you were in San Diego. Mm -hmm. What did you think of those places? Um, San Diego's okay. Uh -huh. um, I know people in Tucson <laughs> love San Diego for some reason. I think it's the beach. It's uh -huh. like very different from here. But uh -huh. um, I like Tucson a lot more. I think it's a more beautiful place. I think it's a more diverse place. Uh, I think moving from New York to San Diego was just such a huge culture shock. Sure. 
so um, I'm very happy to be here. And had you been, had you spent time in Tucson yeah. before you moved here? Yeah, I got family here. Uh, my uh, grandmother lived here for, you know, ever until she died, and then I have other family that's still alive. <laughs> Some living family. Some living family. Tuning in right now, I hope. You have, uh, who, who's watching you at home right now? Your... Oh, uh, my husband, Don Porcella. He's an artist. And uh, my dogs, Radio McGriddles, and my papaya. Hi. Adorbs. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Brayton, what about you? Are your dogs watching us at home right now, do you think? No, they're barking at somebody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so you came from Seattle. You had not spent much time in Tucson. I had not. So uh, Seattle was great for a lot of reasons. It's great opportunities. It's, I mean, beautiful up there. You know, there's the mountains, there's the water. You can do everything within like a half an hour. Um, but 10 months of overcast and rain kind of makes the entire population a little <laughs> isolated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted a big boy gay chorus job, and so Tucson happened to be it. And Tucson, the thing that I love about Tucson is the community. I think that the community here is really spectacular and amazing, and there's so many vibrant things about it. I could do without the heat. The heat's a little uh -huh. oppressive to uh -huh. me, but <laughs> but you know it's okay. Maybe I'll my blood will thin and I'll adjust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there anything um, like your first impressions of Tucson versus? your impressions actually living here, was there anything that like changed in that process or? I actually, the, my first impression was flying in and I thought it was really green. That was ah. the thing that was actually surprising to me coming from Seattle, which is yeah. super green and then yeah. flying in, I'm like, oh, there are actually trees and stuff. No, I find that when people come and visit here for the first time, like because the Sonoran Desert is so not what people think of when they think of the desert and it's certainly not what yeah. like the yeah. desert around Phoenix is, people ask me like, well, is this even desert because it doesn't it's so lush and kind of yeah. green in that way um, yeah what about you I mean yeah I mean I, I, definitely the same um, I mean I've never you know I never did anything meaningful outside of like family time here so to get to know the art scene here and how rich the art scene is and you know for a city this size it's very impressive how many oh, yes. arts and cultural organizations mm -hmm. there are how many mm -hmm. museums there are and it really shows that um, people value art and culture here because they want to, you know, have access to to that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what were you both working on like your most recent project before coming to Tucson? Well, my most recent project before coming here, I actually brought here with me, which was the last show that was at Moca Tucson on um, the US Mexico border, which was so, an amazing show, thank by the you. way. So that was an exhibition that I had. I was going to be presenting in San Diego, but when I took the job here, I was like, "Oh, I have to organize like a million exhibitions immediately. <laughs> I'll just take this one here. This could work." Um, and it, it gave me an opportunity to get to know artists living in the Sonoran region more, artists uh, working on the border here, um, because I was really engrossed in the border arts community in San Diego and Tijuana. So that was um, so it was great to do that here. Um, and also the show that I'm working on um, that's going to be in January, a year from now, was a show that I was going to be doing in San Diego, but I brought with me as well. Gotcha. So Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I, you know, I had a queer youth chorus, uh, so 13 to 22 year olds that were queer allied. And then I also had an acapella group that was 21 to 29 year olds. And uh, we did my last show. It was musicians of color, and it was mostly in response to the election where 45 won and kind of the racism that was going on in America. And so we wanted to really claim, you know, that we're here to support people of color. So. Right on. Awesome. Right on. Um, <clears throat> so, that's some dastardly questions. What are your favorite things about, I mean, you kind of touched on this about like, the, you know, the art scene here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what kind of what are your favorite things about Tucson and what are some things you could really do without? Not the heat. <laughs> Other than the answer. climate. <laughs> well, I think I'm still in the honeymoon period because I still right really on. like it here. I think the people are awesome. I love that there's like an actual middle class here. Um, mm -hmm. That's very appealing. Like I like a little bit of the urban grit. I like um, the Tucson motto that I'm sure that you've you've heard a lot. Um, Which one? The keep Tucson shitty motto. Can I, I say that? that? Motto. You can absolutely <laughs> say that. <laughs> but that's what I love about it. You know, like I don't like places that are like too nice. So uh -huh. I like that it's like nice enough. Yeah. That could that could be Tucson's new motto. Like Tucson, good enough. Good enough. Just a, 
just yeah. a little shitty around the edges. Yeah, but I, I like, like that. You know, Absolutely. it's like it's like a real place with the real people. Um, so yeah. Right on. What What do you hate about Tucson? Is there anything? <sighs> Nothing. People, the way people drive. Oh, it's yeah, like, I think hateable. it's like that's young, really young people and older people sharing the road together. Like people that are totally unaware for one reason, people that are totally unaware for another reason. Right. It's like, like the speeding and then uh -huh. like the like, why are you going 25 miles under the speed limit? It's crazy. Right. It's like the yeah. retirees driving who can like barely see over the steering wheel and then it's like the entitled students from California in yeah, like it's giant just, Mercedes SUVs. I've never <laughs> seen so many car accidents in my life. Like driving to work every day, it's like three car accidents every right. single day, and it's just like the stupidest <laughs> stuff. It's like what? Like no one's aware that there's other people in the world than them. Yeah. Yeah. So I also find that people like they do this thing where they're like they're too nice about driving, where it's like just go and everything yeah. would be fine. But it's like they're like you go. Oh, no, no, you no, go. No, you go ahead, bicycle. It's like if you had gone, I would have already yeah. crossed the yeah. road and we'd all be on our way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. I have yeah. to second that. I think the traffic's awful, but. For me, I want to bike again because I used to bike everywhere in Seattle. Yeah, I had a great butt because of it. Uh, well, Seattle's very hilly too. Yeah, so super hilly, right? And here it's flat, but I'm totally. I'm frightened to bike here because You'll get these dry right exactly. Yeah. I would right. like to live past 34, 44. You know. <laughs> I mean, there's routes you can take. You yeah. just have to stay off those oh, main I don't know. roads. I'm afraid by Park Place. I don't know. It's kind of scary over there. It That's true. Scary. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you get one of those like bubble bike kind of things with like the boy in the bubble. Oh yeah, actually I just want to be a gerbil. Can I just have yeah. like, a, a big bubble? bubble. There we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I think that's perfect. Love it. I'll be safe forever. <laughs> uh, I think most people in the United States do live in a bubble. So, you know. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Just fitting in. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's the max. Who knew we were gonna do a metaphor right there? <laughs> Way to bring in the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> so this sort of brings us to what we're doing now. Um, you know, you've taken over, taken the reins at Mocha and tamed that horse, tamed that wild <laughs> beast. Um, how could you that? help me with? Could you help me with that? Because I've got about yeah, sixty gay men that I could. <laughs> I work with artists. Same thing. Oh, same thing. <laughs> I work with about sixty gay men too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, what was that like? How was how was landing here, and and what are you working on? Currently Good, in yeah. Zealand? I mean, I, I you know I came here because there's a lot of potential both in Tucson in general, but also at Mocha Tucson, and I like going to places that need a little bit of work. Like I like I don't want to go someplace that's like already perfect. I mm -hmm. want to like make my mark somewhere and do something important and meaningful and. I mean, Mocha Tucson is just such an awesome location, and like the building's really cool. Um, so yeah, the next show that I have coming up, opening April uh, April seventh, is a Dutch artist, Volker de Jong. He's like my favorite artist in the world. Mm -hmm. and I'm so excited that we're working together. Um, he does these really crazy contempor uh, contemporary figurative sculptures out of styrofoam, very large scale, but all about um, colonialism and its historical traumatic effects. Um, so it's kind of like heavy, but the work is executed in a very like lighthearted hmm. way to talk about colonialism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His work's fantastic. So I think people are gonna be really excited. Um, you know, we've been getting emails and, and people that are just like, oh, we can't believe you're bringing this guy to Tucson. He's my favorite artist. So I'm happy to see other people are, you know, into him as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, what are you working on currently? Uh, so with the Reveille Men's Chorus, we're working on a concert called Voices Like Ours, which we are examining kind of four different voices within our chorus. So those that are aging, those that are parents, those that uh, are immigrants or have immigrant status in their history, and then kind of those of us who are working with our gender fluidity and what that means. And so we kind of do these four sections in the story with music and um, little funny quirks and whatnot um, in a concert. So it's going to be great. That's May 19th and 20th at ATC. And then with Desert Voices, um, we're doing a concert called Celebrating the Spectrum, which we do a lot more about relationships. So songs about relationships, ending love, kind of lustful love, uh, friendship love, family love. Um, and that's June 10th at ATC. And we're also bringing in Palm Spring Gay Men's Chorus. Um, Phoenix Women's Chorus, and then Voices of the Desert, which is from Phoenix. So it's going to be like this giant gay chorus celebration. Amazing. It's amazing. I can't believe Palm Springs has a gay men's chorus. They have four. 
<laughs> I can't believe they don't have more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that seems low. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Ah, <laughs> uh, I can't wait for all of that. Full disclosure, I'm actually in Reveille Men's Chorus, so I'm just sitting here pretending oh. like, oh, wow, what are we doing? Wow, that's <laughs> that would be alarming, <laughs> since I see you every Monday. <laughs> Uh, no, but I'm super excited. The, I mean, the the concert's coming along really well, and I'm really excited about the music. Are you gonna Are you gonna wear a dress for the concert? You know, I need to go shop. Can we go shopping sometime? Yeah, I'd like love one that. One of these weekends because yeah. I just don't. I don't know what to do. Everything that I wish that I could wear, you can wear. So we can just there. there yeah, we go. You just pick out something for me. Perfect. Like Done. that Lady Die number that we tried oh on a few weeks ago. Yeah. I really liked that. Yeah, I yeah. think that's great. Awesome. Great. Shopping date. You want to come along? Take us to the Pinata factory. Sure. Yeah. Do they make dresses? The Pinata I think dresses? So. Yeah. Pinata so. Yeah. And excuse me, I have to. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> what time do they close? <laughs> um, I'm also curious about um, what that transition is like coming into an institution where you're brand new and perhaps I think in, in both cases, you know, there'd been someone at the reins for quite a long time and, and kind of negotiating, like, do you ever feel like you're in someone's shadow? Or how do you, no. how do you strike your own identity without? <laughs> no, I mean, I think when I was younger, I worried about those things. But mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm yeah. confident in my abilities. And I think, um, you know, I want every show to be our best show. I want every program to be our best program. And, you know, we're going to continue growing together. And I mean, we're a contemporary art museum, so we should continue to change. And what we look like now is probably very different than what we looked like 20 years ago. Sure. And hopefully in five, 10 years, we're going to be a totally different organization as well. So yeah. it's exciting. What do you see your role as, of MOCA in the community? Well, I mean, I, it's really important for me to be in the community doing outreach and partnering with different organizations. Um, I mean, we're the only contemporary art museum in town, um, so it's important for us to be representing what's happening locally, regionally, nationally, globally. So it's, it's always a delicate balance of um, presenting programs that reflect the wants and needs of Tucson, but that also uh, speak to people to on a global context. level. Oh. Yes. Sure, sure. I imagine the concerns are very similar for the choruses. I mean, it is they're yeah. local organizations, but you're dealing with kind of yeah. larger issues. You know, a couple of years ago, when uh, same-sex marriage was approved by the same or by the Supreme Court, there was kind of this thought about in gay choruses, like what are, what are we doing now? What is mm -hmm. our mission? What is our goal? And as we saw in this last election, that clearly we still have a lot of work to do. Certainly. And so um, Desert Voices and Reveille, even though they're two separate 501c3s, are joining up together to do a state tour of Arizona. So we can go to small little red places that may not have any openly gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer people, and saying, "Here's who's here we are. We want to know who you are. We want to break bread together. And we want to really find out what, what makes us similar so we can because we can't change opinions if we don't get to know these people. We can't just sit on Facebook and we can't say, you're wrong. Like, mm -hmm. we have to have a relationship with them. And so, you know, I don't think there's anything better to bring people together than music. It's always on the radio, in the car, or at concerts. And, you know, I, I might not be, um, you know, the same ideology that they have, but I can appreciate country music, or I can appreciate rap, or I can sure. appreciate just pop stuff. So I think music is so uniting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, Inspiring. I can't wait to go to one of your concerts. Oh, good. Yeah. I want you to come. Hey, let me know. I'll get you a ticket. Sounds great. I'll pay. Oh, well, that's great, too. <laughs> Actually, if you wear that outfit, I'll just bring you on stage as a guest star. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no can good. you sing? Do you sing? Uh, no. No, not at all. Not you think? I bet you can. The best place in Tucson? Yeah. The best Western karaoke? What? Like, have you been there? It's been a long time, but it was it was How did really I not know good. that the coolest place to hang out in Tucson was a Best Western? It's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> you know what actually killed me is the, the interior of that place used to be beautiful. It uh -huh. was like this vaulted dark brick. It looked like you were in like a 1900s like subway platform or something. And then they and remodeled it. And now you're just like it. in a 1970s dive bar. Exactly. Yeah. Which has its own charms. Yes. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. But. <laughs> 
It was so beautiful in there before, and I was devastated that they destroyed that interior. But I have not checked out karaoke in a really long time. I've been going to the Just piano do bar. It. That's at Dusty Monk. Monk? Oh. On Thursdays? On Thursday nights. I need night. to go. Oh, so I've heard, I heard this it's, was it's good. It's amazing. super fun. Well, my roomie, when we lived in New York together, we used to go to this, like, oh, God, it was a den of inequity sort of coke nest. But it was like the best piano bar in the West Village. It's called Marie's Crisis. And she was a regular there. And then they started doing this here, and she just flipped her shit. It was like her favorite thing to do. Um, and it's been growing. Like, the, there's yeah. a community, there's a few Reveille people. Well, who, who and Elliot come in. Jones, the one that plays. Yes. He's a fantastic musician. He's amazing. Yeah. He's a lovely human being as well. So, cool. you should we also check get it out. Voice. It's learn, been on the list. Learn yeah. some show tunes. And yeah. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> we could do a duet. I didn't say I could sing. I, I thought I, I sang at a you best sing. Western you one. The one time. <laughs> I sing at the best Western one time, and we're already doing a duet. Yeah. <laughs> we could sing like I Got You, Babe, or something. Uh, we'll think about it. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk after the show. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, amazing. Yeah. Well, I think we're almost out of time here. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Like, say hello to your animals or. Well, I know Maya Papaya and Radio McGriddles are watching right now. They're my Rapt biggest fans. So, um, Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Did you just leave the TV on for them? <clears throat> um, when we're not home, yes. Oh. Yeah. Huh. To I Channel 20. What channel? Oh, <laughs> they're <laughs> looking at <laughs> Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you. That's very yeah. generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have been talking with Ginger Schulich Porcella of the Museum of Contemporary Art, Tucson, and Jared Brayton Bollenbacher of Reveille Men's Chorus and Desert Voices. Thank you both so much for being here. Thanks Make for sure Thanks, to Luke. check out uh, Voices Like Ours at Temple of Music and Art on May 19th and 20th. You can get tickets at ReveilleMensChorus.org. And uh, the upcoming show, Folklore to Jong, Last Nation, opens April 7th and runs through the end of June. June 30th. Yeah. So keep your ears peeled for that. Also, there's uh, an event happening tomorrow night, yes? The third Thursdays, every third Thursday at the museum. We're open late for free. We have, uh, open, uh, we have a bar, we have bands, we have DJs. It's a different theme. This theme is a uh, beauty bar. So you get massages, you can get your nails did, you can get like, like sick fade. You can I get think you an just sold me on it. Oh, yeah, come I'm all about it. Massages. Uh, it's going to yeah. be awesome. So Sponsored we're going to Salon Salon. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Hell yeah, let's do it. Ah. All right, also thank you, Desert Tucson. Voices. Desert, Desert Voices. Oh, the Desert June Voices. 10. Voices. Yeah. Yes, the right. Desert Voices uh, <laughs> celebrating the spectrum. Also at Temple of Music and Art, yeah. June 10th at 2 30. Tickets can be found at desertvoices.org. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Get out there, support your local museum, support your local gay choruses, and stay creative, Tucson.